Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Zach and I'm an amateur astrophotographer based out of Northern Nevada. Tonight I'm going to be shooting the Rosette Nebula within the constellation of Monoceros. The Rosette Nebula is a giant cloud of dust and ionized gas located just a little northeast of the Orion constellation within the Northern Hemisphere. And tonight I'm going to be using my RedCat 51 telescope in order to get a nice wide field view of this region. The RedCat 51 has a focal length of 250 millimeters and I have it with a ZWO 533MC Pro. So I should be able to frame up the Rosette Nebula very nicely using this wide field scope and the square aspect ratio of the 533 sensor. And paired with it, I also have a ZWO 120mm mini on an off axis guider and a ZWO electronic autofocuser. Now I know it's not really necessary to have an off axis guider for a focal length length like this of 250 millimeters, but I have this imaging train go from telescope to telescope, so I just kind of wanted to keep it all together. So I'm going to be using my off-axis guider for this tonight. And in order to put the electronic autofocuser on this, I actually had to buy this adapter. It's just the Buckeye Stargazer ZWO EAF adapter. You can find it on aginaastro.com, but you need it in order to use it with the RedCat 51 Gen 2 because it has the helical focuser right here. So this is just connected onto a small little adapter right here and the belt is right on the helical focuser so I can still use my EAF with this scope. Now I know I just said I have the off-axis guider here that I'm gonna be using for guiding tonight, but since this scope is so light and in order to balance, I actually need to add a little bit more weight to it. So I'm using my old guide scope and I'm putting it right on top just to add weight, but I'm not actually gonna be guiding from it. I'm gonna be guiding from my off-axis guider here. The only purpose this is gonna be serving tonight is just to add weight to my scope, just so that way I can properly balance. Now we did just have a little bit of a snowstorm here, but it's nothing too bad, just a light dusting of snow. Now usually after a storm like this, the nights actually shape up to be very clear and very cold. So I'll actually be able to get my 533 sensor down to negative 20 degrees Celsius, which is typically what I like to shoot at. I had to go and get a guest who's going to be appearing on my channel today. This is one of my birds, Helia. She was screaming in the other room. She wasn't going to stop, so I just figured I'd bring her in here with me. She's just going to chill on my shoulder while I record this video. I'm sure she'll be a little bit more calm now that she's in here with me. But anyway, just to recap, tonight, shooting the Rosette Nebula, I'm going to be using my Red Cat 51. And something else, I'm also going to be using a ZWO dual band filter. So that way, I'll be able to isolate just the wavelengths of light that I want coming from an emission nebula like the rosette. And those wavelengths are gonna be primarily in the red and the blue-green spectrums, since ionized hydrogen emits in red and ionized oxygen emits in blue and green. Now, this is gonna be my first time going back to the rosette after a few years. I actually tried getting the rosette nebula with my RedCat and 533 a few years ago when I first started getting into this hobby. And my processing skills were not quite what they are today, so I'm really looking forward to going back to this target. And one more time, I just wanted to introduce my daughter here, Helia. She's gonna be going back into the other room here shortly, but hopefully she'll stay quiet so I can actually record the video. Anyway, let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm gonna be setting up all my equipment outside here shortly, so that way it can acclimate to the temperatures. And I'll see you guys when it starts getting dark out. So I was able to image for most of the night and I ended up with 55 total exposures. Now I was only able to use 47 of those, which is actually pretty good after I went through any that had star trailing or that were out of focus, but I didn't end up being able to use 47 of them, which is just a little under four hours worth of exposures. Now I just wanted to show you guys here all of the equipment and software that I was using last night. For my telescope, I had that William Optics RedCat 51 second gen, which I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. That is the one with the helical focuser, not with the new knob focuser that they have on the newer generations. For my mount, I had a Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro, 
and then I was using that ZWO 533MC Pro with the ZWO 120mm Mini for my guide camera. And I have all my accessories listed here as well, including the electronic autofocuser and that off-axis guider that I showed you guys. But I did have some other items here that I wanted to note as well. So I have a helical focuser for my guide camera that goes on the off-axis guider. And I did mention that I was using that ZWO dual band filter as well. But on top of that, I also had a just generic dual band heater that I bought on Amazon and then a Pullmaster Polar Alignment camera as well. Now for my image acquisition PC, I have a Dell Optiplex 3050 that I use. It's just an old mini PC that I found secondhand here locally. You actually don't need anything super powerful for your image acquisition PC. And this Dell Optiplex works pretty well for what I needed to do. For my software though, I'm using Astrophotography Tool, which is that software you saw with the kind of orange tint on it during that time lapse. For guiding, I'm using PHD2, and I have my mount connected to the PC using the e EQ mod cable, and that's all controlled through the Stellarium software. All right, with that out of the way, let's see what we ended up getting last night. So here is the initial stack of the rosette. I do have the auto stretch function on. We can see if we turn it off, it's pretty much just black with a few stars. But if we turn it back on, we can see that we captured quite a bit of the nebulosity here right in the center. Now, of course, this is all unprocessed and doing a quick dynamic background extraction, we can kind of get a better idea of the data that we have within this stack. So just my initial thoughts here, this does look quite a bit better than the last attempt that I had with this same exact equation equipment just a few years back. And just to compare, this was my final image of the rosette using the same equipment with my RedCat, my HEQ5, and my 533. So the one on the right hand side is a fully processed image of the rosette that I took back in March of 2023. So it's been almost two years now since I've gone back to this target with this equipment. And just looking now, I can see that the inner details of the rosette look a lot sharper than they did on my previous image. And again, this is a still unprocessed image on the left-hand side here of what I did last night, but I'm just doing initial comparisons right now. And yeah, this definitely does look sharper than what I did previously. Now, last night I was able to get five minute sub exposures, whereas my previous image over here, these were just 30 second sub exposures. So hopefully I'll be able to make out a lot more of the finer detail around the edge, like right here, that I was unable to get in the last attempt. And just one more thing before I end the video and show you guys the final product. One thing that I really love about this hobby, about astrophotography, is the consistent opportunity to improve, to keep doing better, and to keep learning. Even if you're using the same equipment for years and years, there's always opportunity to be better, to learn more, to fine tune your process, and learn from others as well. It's a really unique hobby in the fact that you can continue to grow for so long. And there are so many different aspects outside of just the image acquisition, like the processing alone has taken years to improve and get good at. And even now, I would still consider Consider myself beginner to intermediate maybe and I've been doing it for three years now this is a hobby that truly can take a lifetime to master and during that time you're learning you're growing and you're collaborating and even beyond that astrophotography is unique in the fact that you get to see all these amazing things out in the universe and learn what they are where they are and how it relates to us as human beings. Right here, the Rosette Nebula, this is an example of our solar system's precursor, how we came to be. These giant celestial behemoths that are out there, we can learn. We can learn how and why we are here. And I don't know, I just, I, I really like that aspect of this hobby is that you get to see all these different things and, and apply them to here and now. It's difficult for most people to understand cosmological timescales, but astronomers, professional and amateur, help to piece together our history and what the future holds. Again, I'm just, I'm kind of getting deep into it right now. That's just my opinion as to why I really enjoy this hobby as well. The learning, the growing, the developing. This is really something somebody can do for a lifetime and never get bored and always learn from. But anyway, with that out of the way, if you stuck around to listen to that, thank you. Let's go ahead and show you guys what I was able to capture last night of the Rosette Nebula from my backyard in a Bortle 7 city.